Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson. Dimitri and I managed to knock the coat stand over while coming in here to stream, so that's going to be some clearing up for us to do afterwards, isn't it? This week we're looking at written comprehension skills. If you're on my mailing list, you'll have got the paper already, so you'll know, uh, you'll have read the passage and you'll know what the questions are. If you aren't on my mailing list, the worksheet with the passage and the questions is linked in the video description down there, and it's a past paper from Solihull School, which is a fantastic school in the Midlands. Um, right, let's get started in a second. You know about my free marking offer that you can send me a bit of writing for completely free feedback. Do take advantage of it if you haven't already. The information is also in the video description. I should turn my other light on, Dimitri. I forgot to do that. Let's let you go out and I'll turn my light on. And there was light. And let's get started. Oh, I'm out of focus. Whoa. There we are. Um, let's get started with the text for today's lesson. Hello everybody in the comments, lots of people saying very nice things. Uh, Janina apologising for not being here last week, you don't have to apologise. The videos stay up on the channel so you can watch them at any time. The main joy of watching this live is getting to wait for the next massive mistake and being able to laugh at me. Uh, so, the text is here. I'm not going to read through the whole text because that isn't a good use of your lesson time and those who have read it will be bored, but it's linked in the video description down there. You can print it out and have a look at it as we go through. I'm not planning to cover all the questions today. Um, you can see I've got the question one, which is a very easy one. We're going to go through a few. Um, and when I've been going for long enough, we'll call it quits. And then I'll decide whether to come back and do more next time or another time or not, and to do something totally different. It has yet to be decided. I'm that organised. Okay, so let's see how we go. I'm going to be typing my answers today, but you'll be relieved to know, so you will actually have a chance of reading what I put down. And let's get right into it. Um, I'm afraid, Ferry, I don't, uh, Imam, I don't do shout outs for people who ask for them, because then everybody would ask for them. Um, so that's why I don't shout out the names of people who ask for shout outs. Uh, Joshua Alexander volunteers to do the second paragraph. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, if you just hook your camera up, I'll just duck out, you can just take over, that'd be wonderful, I'll have a nice relaxed evening. Uh, okay, in your own words, write out the meaning of the word, no, what? Uh, yeah, okay, the meaning of the word emerged in line four, okay? Oh, by the way, as may become apparent, I haven't uh, worked out the answer to these, answers to these questions in advance at all. I'm going to be making the answers up as we go along, partly because I'm poorly organised, but mainly because I think that's a better way for you to learn, to actually see me trying to think my way through the questions, even if it means I make howlers. Write out the meaning of the word emerged in line four, okay? So, line four, we are around about, here we are, emerged. Okay, so, when he emerged, he said, soon set off again, wondering how long the journey through the forest would take and how close he would be to the Blue River when it emerged. Okay, so is this about him emerging from the forest? No, it isn't. Okay, or maybe it is. There's a difficulty here. Oops, there we are. Uh, what does the word it refer to? Is it the Blue River? Is it the journey through the forest? Um, well, we can see from the next bit that the, that the Blue River goes around the forest. It doesn't go through it. So it doesn't make sense to say that the Blue River emerges from the forest because it never goes into, into it in the first place. So therefore, it here must refer to the journey, not to the river. Um, and therefore... This must be where his journey through the forest emerges. So that's very, actually very tricky. So this is the point at which he, his route, comes out of the forest. And he's wondering how that, that near that will be to the Blue River. So what does emerged mean? Well, it means coming out of something. But we need to talk about how it's used here. So let's be a little bit fuller. So here we are, let's just run, let's just put it up here. So emerged um, describes theories, theories, root coming out of the forest. Okay, I think that's completely clear. So we got the meaning coming out, but just to make sure we've put it clearly in a context that makes sense sense with the text. And I don't see how that couldn't get two marks 
The trouble with this is if you think it's about the river and then you get a little bit stuck and that's a tricky thing. Okay, how many days will it take to travel from the city of Dagonort to the Great Mountains? Let's have a look. So I have read through the text but only quickly once um, and I know from my read through that this information is somewhere around, can you see, you can't see my cursor, it, well it's here. So there's a reference here, eight to ten days. But you need to read very carefully. And this is where comprehension skills are important. Because someone who's just starting out with comprehension, however smart they might be, is liable to see that information and go, well, clearly that's the information I need to write it down. So they're going to say it will take eight to ten days because the question says, how many days will it take to travel from the city of Dagonort to the Great Mountains? And the passage says, from the city of Dagonort to the mountains was a journey of around eight to ten days. But careful. And very importantly, because the main point of these lessons is for me to teach you technique, it's not just to get the answers. Very importantly, this is why you need to read the text in advance, always. And this is why people who say, oh, I just do it one question at a time, are completely wrong. And they're going to lose marks in an exam. Because if you've read the passage in advance, you know that there's more to it than this. It was a journey of around eight to ten days by horse, horse along the road itself. But he had heard about it. There were some typos in this had heard about it from travellers and knights errant. Okay, so other kinds of people, not people like him, not people with a secret mission. And if you've read the stuff above the text, you'll know about his secret mission. Always read that stuff. His journey was sure to take longer. And still he would only have travelled as far as the mountains. The way was long, the letter was important. So he's, he's not going to travel along the road. He's going through the forest, right? He's cutting away from the main route that people take for one reason or another because he has a secret mission because he doesn't want to be seen and caught. So his journey will take longer. Do we know how long? And again, if you're just thinking it question by question, you'll search the passage for more information. There isn't any. You may think that a question, how many days will it take, has an answer in days. It doesn't. What we know is that for a normal traveller, it takes eight to ten days. But for him, it will take longer. Okay? So if it's going to take longer than eight to ten days, that means that it's going to take longer than ten days in practice. Because if it was longer than eight days but less than ten, it would still be in eight to ten days. So what we know is that his journey is going to take longer than ten days. His journey will last more than 10 days. Now that really is all that I can put here. There isn't any more information. Three marks and this amount of answer space might well suggest to you, and it wouldn't be a stupid thing to think, that you need to provide some explanation. But the question doesn't say that. It just says how many days. It's very explicit. You just need to answer the question. It needs to be more than 10 days. And I think more than eight to 10 days should also get the marks. But it's the number and the more than. If you say eight to 10 days, probably only one mark. If you said a long time, probably only one mark. If you combine these two bits of information, that's worth three marks because it's for the two bits of information and essentially a bonus mark for your skill in putting all that together. Um, suddenly Robert turned around and ran without Shrek knowing is a comment I've got here. Um, cryptic. Are you trying to tell me there's a Shrek behind me? Uh, no, not... Well, maybe lurking behind my green screen. Okay. Question four. What impression do we get of the forest? What is it like? What suggests this? You can see they're giving you a lot of answer space and there are five marks available. What does this mean? We need to give our impressions and we need to say what suggests them. In other words, we need to give evidence. So if it was a six mark question, you'd understand this easily. You need three impressions and three bits of evidence. That would be an easy way to do it. This is five marks. So maybe it's for two points really well explained. Maybe it's for three points and you can get away with being a little bit weak on one of them. Maybe they're just going to mark it for the overall quality out of five and they're not counting it in that way. It's impossible to know. But once we've looked at the relevant part of the text, maybe that will give us clues. As I've said already, I really don't know what the answer is here. I've just read through the text once. So let's have a look. Where do we learn about the forest? Let's go for a different colour of 
mark. Let's go for red. Okay. So here we are looking at the forest. Starts here. The journey through the forest proved hard and slow. And it goes up to... Um, well, all the rest of it happens in the forest, actually. Okay. So let's have a look, see what we can learn about the forest. The journey is hard and slow. That isn't a description of the forest, but it tells us something about the forest, that it's difficult to travel through. Sometimes you have to lead the horse rather than ride on it, and to make it easier to fight away from the underwear, if you tore off a large strip from the bottom of his rope. So that's more about, well, what does that tell us? It tells us that there's thick undergrowth. It says undergrowth here. That's a typo, of course, undergrowth. Um, so stuff all growing around the floor of the forest, you know, brambles and creepers and all that kind of stuff, nettles, thistles, all that stuff growing there. Um, and it's thick, and it's thick and high enough and sharp enough that it actually catches on his clothes constantly, and he has to rip part of his clothes off. I mean, I think it would be better just to tuck the robe up underneath, but, you know, who am I to say? That morning eating the last of the bread, blah, blah, blah. Um, he eats fruit and roots. So we also learn that there are um, things to eat in the forest. Okay. He encountered no one all day. It seemed as if no one ever set foot, set foot in the forest. So you've got no one and no one twice there, really emphasising the emptiness of the forest. What else do we get down here? Um, bidi 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 bidi. He quickly hid. So that's another sign of the density of the forest that you can easily hide yourself when you need to. Um, mum, mum, mum. The voice has moved away, blah, away, blah, blah, blah. Part of the forest is so wild. You could search for days here without ever finding anyone. Okay, that tells us a lot about the forest, that he has to be somewhere. All I see is trees and thorns and creepers to trip you up. It's a perfect hiding place. Okay, that's enough. What themes do we get? We get the density of the undergrowth. We get all this stuff about undergrowth, about creepers, about thorns, all that kind of thing. We get the emptiness of it. The way that it seems very, very empty until these people turn up. And we get, on the other hand, that there it isn't completely inhospitable. You can hide away and there are some things to eat. And the things coming later on really just reinforce force those points. I think that's going to be plenty for a five mark answer. Now let's do this nice and succinctly, but explaining it fully. So the forest is dense with undergrowth. Now notice what I'm doing with quotations here. Um, including thorns and so what am I doing? <sighs> including thorns and creepers. That is the quote, isn't it? Oh, you can't see what I'm writing. Sorry, I've got the wrong screen up because I'm a fool. But you knew that already. Uh, let's sort that out. There we are. That's the one. Um, Forest is dense with undergrowth, including thorns and creepers. OK. Um, this makes it difficult to travel through. But... We have to talk about our impression of the forest. What can we make in terms of an emotional impression? Um, this makes it seem, so that phrase really clearly introduces um, a subjective impression, um, rather forbidding and uninviting. Forbidding and uninviting are very similar in meaning. And normally I would say, just pick one. But I think in this case, it just allows me to expand the point a bit. And there is a slight difference. Forbidding is something that really deters you. Uninviting is something that doesn't really encourage you to go in. So they're not exactly the same. If this was a piece of creative writing, I'd say cross one out. But here I want to make clear to the examiner that I've really understood that I've really thought about this. Okay, this makes it seem rather forbidding and uninviting. And now we've dealt with those things. Notice what I've done here. I've got a very simple factual sentence about the forest in which I include very short quotations. Because that way, I'm giving evidence, I'm showing what suggests this. 
but I'm not wasting any time and I'm certainly not copying out whole sentences. Everything is integrated into my own sentence. Then I've got a very simple follow-up sentence that explains what fact I can deduce from those facts. This makes it difficult to travel through. And then I give my impression based on this information. So this is a very thorough way to give my first point. This will easily wrap up a couple of those, those five marks. Okay, what do we have next? So we were also going to talk about, we've got the positive of having fruits and roots and hiding places, but let's stick to the negative. So we got negative, negative, and then the positive. Um, so it seems very empty. And what's the focus on that? That the word no one is repeated, okay? So the re repetition of no one emphasizes how um, empty, uh, yeah, how empty the forest is, how alone and perhaps lonely it would be to travel through it. So again, see how I'm veering from evidence and factual statement to a subjective, in other words, to do with my own personal impressions and emotions um, statement, so that I'm consistently dealing with what it's like, so that's empty, what suggests this, repetition of no one, and my impression, which is that I can imagine feeling alone and perhaps lonely traveling through it. Okay, so we're doing very well here. We've, we're well on the way to these five marks. Let's get this last simple point down. So, however, it isn't completely inhospitable. In other words, inhospitable, it means a place that you couldn't survive in, couldn't live in, a place you wouldn't want to be in, um, and very unhomely place, because there are things to eat, fruit and roots, and because it offers, um, it, because it can be a perfect hiding place. That's another good quote from the people whom theory sees. Nonetheless, so it's good to use a transition word like this to show that you're flipping to the other side of the argument. Nonetheless, however, despite this, on the other hand, lots of things that you can do to show this flip from one side to the other side. And that means that it doesn't sound as though you're contradicting yourself. You're very clearly saying, I've given those arguments, but here's a positive. Nonetheless, um, it is not entirely inhospitable. In fact, I'm going to say it does not seem. Why do you think I'm doing that? Answer, because to using words like seem clearly shows that I'm talking about what impression I get. It makes it about me and my feelings. Um, not everything in the world is about me, uh, even I know that, but sometimes it's important to make it about you. Nonetheless, it does not seem entirely inhospitable. I've just explained that word. You could also use a word like unwelcoming or hostile. Those would also work fine. Um, nonetheless, it does not seem entirely inhospitable. Uh, no, let's put a colon. So the colon means this is my point, now this is my reasoning. Nonetheless, it does not seem entirely inhospitable. There is food in the form of, what's the quote? Fruit and roots. I can say it, but you can't. But you can because you can print out the worksheet um, of fruit and roots. There is food in the form of fruit and roots. And there is safety. Let's check the quotation again. So you're always going to be flicking to and fro between the uh, questions and the text. And by the way, this is the reason why you need to underline the evidence that you're going to use for a question. Because when I'm flicking back now, if I had to refine this quote, I'd waste valuable time. Whereas because it's underlined, I can waste time by talking to you instead. Okay, we've underlined it. It's perfect hiding place down here. Perfect hiding place. So let's go back. And there is safety in the form of perfect hiding places. Now you'll notice that I've been a little bit sneaky there because the text said perfect hiding place and I've changed it to perfect hiding places. Very minor adjustments such as moving something from the past tense into the present tense if that doesn't distort the meaning uh, as you use it 
or changing a singular to a plural just to make a quote fit into your sentence is generally acceptable. Very minor changes like that. If you start taking out or adding in words in the middle or doing anything that changes the meaning more than this, then you're misquoting. It's a difficult balance, but what I've just done here, you can get away with. Okay, so this is the answer. This is my answer. Um, it's relatively short. It wouldn't take up the whole of the answer space they've given us. I think it would take up about two thirds of it uh, if you hand wrote it. The forest is dense with undergrowth, including thorns and creepers. This makes it difficult to travel through. Um, oh, this is a bit ugly. This makes this makes. That's rather repetitive, isn't it? This makes it difficult to travel through. Um, um, and OK, and creates a sense that it is rather forbidding and uninviting. I know it's harder to edit these things if you're handwriting. Now, an important point to make, what I just changed there, it would not not have lost your mark, it's just stylistic, but I want to show you good writing style and repetitions like that are ugly. Uh, so don't worry about it. if you wrote this makes, this makes, as long as you don't all the, do it all the time, it's not a problem. This makes it difficult to travel through and creates a sense that is rather, it is rather forbidding and uninviting. The repetition of no one emphasizes how empty the forest is, how alone and perhaps how lonely it would be to travel through it. Um, oh, how alone it would be to travel through it. How alone, so it might be slightly better grammar to say how alone or perhaps how lonely one might feel when traveling through it. Don't worry about this, it just it's just a little bit more elegant. Nonetheless, it does not seem entirely inhospitable. There is food in the form of fruits, fruit and roots and there is safety in the form of perfect hiding places. Okay, in the form of is a bit repetitive and there is safety offered by perfect hiding places. Okay, so this does it really well. You don't need to worry so much about the style of your answer as long as it communicates clearly and you've given good evidence, that's okay for written comprehension. But I just you know, want to show you the kind of way that I care about writing. Now we double check with the question, have we done everything? What impression do we get? I've given, I've given an impression for every point. What is it like? All my impressions are based on information. What suggests this? All my information is grounded in quotation evidence. And the quotes are nice and short and they're part of my sentences. Have I done enough for five marks? I've easily covered enough for six marks, so this will be no trouble at all. Okay, let's push on. I know this is not the most exciting thing ever, but these are really useful exam skills. Um, they're really useful skills for anything. This is the kind of thing when people talk about the point of 11 plus, I say the point of 11 plus shouldn't be to pass the 11 plus exam. The point of all this should be to learn skills that you need at secondary school to put yourself ahead of the rest of the crowd. And then if along the way you pass the exam that you want and get into the school you want, that's a bonus. But these skills, whatever kind of exam you're, set, you're sitting for 11 plus, these are vital skills when you head off into secondary school. By the way, I'm not gonna let this be a super long lesson. I'm not going to spin it out to an hour, don't worry. Um, this is going to be a relatively short lesson, I think. Um, okay, I think I've cut some questions out, haven't I? Because here we have question seven. Why did events take a different turn on the fourth day? What happened? Okay, so let's look at the question for a second. We've got a why, so that means we need to give a reason We've also got a what, so we need to provide facts. Now, the why may be bound up with the what, but it might not be. It might be that one reason causes the events to take a different turn, and then we also need to give the facts about what happened afterwards. So we need to be open to this. Whether they're combined into the same points or whether they're separate points, we need to make sure, when we've written our answer, that we have covered the why and the what. Also, we need to make sure that we focus on the fourth day and we don't veer into talking about some other day. That's very important. Right, so let's find the fourth day. It's here. On, let's go to, what should we do? Should we green. Oh, a controversial colour. On the fourth day of his journey, however I say that because some people, some people associate green with beauty and luscious nature and for some people it's, you know, disgusting, slimy, rotting things. Um, you can't please everybody. On the fourth day of his journey, however, events took a different turn. Okay, so that's the quotation that we've been pointed to. So we know it's this section. 
Tiuri heard the sound of voices and of people making their way through the undergrowth. He quickly hid and waited to see what would happen. So, what? Why did events take a different turn? Because having been alone for three days, I think, suddenly he hears people nearby. And the question says, what happened? Okay, how do we answer this? That could be the whole rest of the story, but it's only a three mark question. So he, Tiuri, um, hid um, and they did not see him. Tiuri hid uh, and he did not, and they did not see him, um, but he just overheard some of their conversation. It's only a three mark question, so it can't be requiring any more than that. And actually, I don't know how much of that it needs. I find the wording here a bit poor because what happened could be a requirement for you to summarize the entire rest of the passage. So maybe we should take it that way, but do it briefly. Um, after days um, of solitude, how about that? Very, very famous book, 100 Days of Solitude, actually a marvellous book that I strongly recommend. But anyway, um, maybe when you're a little bit older. Uh, but um, yeah, it's a good word. It means being by yourself. After days of 100 days, there's 100 years of solitude, isn't it? 100 years of solitude. Goodness me, it's a very long time since I read it. Um, after days of solitude, um, Tiuri. Okay, I would tend to write in the present tense, but the question's in the past tense. A good rule is to stick to the tense of the question. Um, Tiuri heard voices and saw other people. He hid and listened to the stranger's conversation and was not discovered. So why did they take a different turn? So let me just explain why I put the first phrase after days of solitude. It's because of the word different. Different comes from the word, you know, it's to do with things being, what am I on about? You know what different means. Um, different implies a comparison, a contrast. For something to be different, it has to have been, well, different before, and then it changes. So you can't really explain difference without saying what things were before, and how they, what they were like before and how they were afterwards. So that's why we put after days of solitude, Turi heard voices and saw other people. That's the different turn. He hid and listened to the stranger's conversation and was not discovered. That's what happened. It's a three mark question. It can't be asking for more than that. If we're going to start saying all the things they, writing down all the things they said, then it could go on for, you know, a huge length. So I don't know what they want here, but I strongly suspect that this ought to be adequate. Where are we up to with time. I think we got time for one more question. Uh, so let's have a crack at question eight, which is a slightly long, it's another five mark one. And then I think we'll call it quits for now. Make it a nice, succinct lesson. What do we learn about the people that Tiuri meets in the woods? I'm not going to lie, I was partly hoping that it was going to be later in the lesson because I, oh, I can't be bothered writing a long answer. But I'm going to do this. I'm the teacher. I'm the one who's not allowed to be lazy. Um, you can all be lazy. You can just pretend you're watching, can't you? Have your headphones in, whatever. Well, if you do, you don't mind saying this. So the people, what do we learn about the people that Tiuri meets in the woods? It's another five mark question. Um, in fact, let's look at the question a little bit longer, sorry. Five mark question, similar amount of space. It's ambiguous. This might be wanting five points without evidence. It might be wanting three points with evidence. Let's see whether we can get down a good number of points with evidence and then we can't lose out. Because although it just says what, I think there's likely to be an expectation of quotation evidence. I don't think these questions are very well worded, I must say. There, this is the new sample paper on the Solihull School website. I don't think it's brilliantly written. I think some of the questions are too ambiguous. Um, with the previous paper that they had, up, which was uh, from The Hobbit, I thought that it was better structured, to be honest. Um, maybe this one needs a little bit of revision. If there's anyone from the solar hole watching this, uh, maybe think about making some of these questions a little bit clearer. What do we learn about the people that Cheery meets in the woods? So we might or might not need evidence for this. Let's provide it to be sure. Always be safe. 
within reason, always come up with answers that are safe and that you can be pretty pretty certain will get the marks. Don't risk it by just going, this isn't asked for evidence, I'm not going to give any. Okay, um, so let's stick with our green. The voices moved away, but soon after that, a young man walked close by. Well, hang on, we know that there are several of them, don't we? Voices and of people, that's something we learn. A young man walked close by, so at least one of them is young. He was dressed in grey and leading a horse. He was armed. He kept stopping and looking around. This is important because this tells us something about what they're doing there. They are looking for something or somebody. And in fact, we discover as we read on that they're looking for somebody. Uh, just to prove to you that I have read this once. Um, but he didn't spot Thierry or his black horse. He soon disappeared and Thierry could hear him speaking to someone. Where have they all got to? Okay, so could that be the people they're looking for? No, because the other boy says they're hunting further to the north. Have you seen anything? So he's clearly asking about the other searchers. There's a big band of searchers in this forest, and this is just one small part of them. Hunting further to the north, said another voice. So they're just part of a bigger group. Well, they all got to tells us that. No tracks either, but it's hard to say. Father said, while you search for days, but he has to be somewhere. Okay. Crucial information. They are looking for one particular male person. He has to be somewhere. I think we can guess whom it might be. All I can say is trees, trees and more. In fact, I know, hang on, because if you read the blurb at the top, Tiuri encountered a dying knight who gave him a letter and the quest of delivering it. So maybe they're looking for the knight. They might be looking for the knight or they might have heard about Tiuri and they're looking for him. I've got no idea. I don't know this book at all. Uh, okay. Voices grew fainter. Then he heard the clear sound of a hunting horn, so they communicate with the horn. Okay. And that's all we learn about these people. But that's a lot, I've got to say. That's a lot. So, let's try and break these ideas down a bit. We need to have a sense of structure. We can't just put them down at random. We know that there are lots... that this group is a small part of a bigger band that is hunting the forest. We know that they are looking for somebody referred to as he. We know that they are dressed in, that at least one of them is dressed in plain colours. We know that they are with horses. We know that they are armed. We know that they're very intent on their search because they keep stopping and looking around. And that might suggest a degree of nervousness as well, although not necessarily. Um, and we know that they communicate with hunting horns. Okay. So let's put this together. And what I'm going to aim to do, I haven't written out a plan, but I am um, going to try and group my ideas together. So I'm not just listing them in the order of the passage. And I'm going to try and try to drop in bits of evidence um, so that if that's a requirement of the mark scheme, I have covered it. But I'm trying, going to try not to do so in a way that wastes time. When I want to waste time, I talk to you guys instead. So, um, these people are, what are they doing? Let's start with that. Um, are hunting for somebody, a, um, a male individual, this makes it sound like a police report, a male individual known as he. Why don't I just say man rather than male individual? Because it could be a male child. I mean, there's no, it could be a boy. So just male individual covers that. They're, but if you said man, it'd be fine. A male individual known as, no, referred, not known as, that implies their name, referred to as he. Hunting for somebody. A male individual referred to as he. Um, the people, Tiuri, uh, meets, I mean that's the wording in the question, but they don't really meet him, do they? The whole point is they don't even see him. The people to encounters, um, I reckon the question said encounters and then changed it to meets because it was simpler um, and easier to understand without considering it had a different meaning. The people to Yuri encounters um, are um, a small part of a bigger um, Search party. Um, um, what was the evidence for that? Oh, hang on. I'm not showing you my answer. I'm an idiot. 
Sorry, that's what I've been writing. At least I've been saying it aloud. The people to you encounter are a small part of a bigger search party. Um, um, they all, that's the, that's the evidence to support that, um, who are uh, searching, no, are hunting, Um, further to the north. I don't know what they need here, so I'm just trying to give them everything, but I'm trying to do it in a really concise way so that it doesn't get long, so it doesn't waste time in the test. Part of a small part of a bigger search party, they all, who are hunting further to the north. Notice the difference here. Further to the north is part of my sentence. So if I took out the quotation marks, this would still make perfect sense grammatically. A bigger search party who are hunting further to the north. But they all would not fit into the grammar of my sentence. A bigger search party, they all who are hunting further to the north. doesn't make any sense. So I have to put that in brackets. So the way that you put punctuation in around quotations is really, really important. And the basic rule is that if a quotation is in your sentence, it should still make grammatical sense, even if you take the quotation marks out. Who are hunting further to the north. Okay. Um... I know I've already used the word hunting, but it was important to separate it out in that other point that they're hunting for somebody. They are simply dressed grey. That word grey is enough for this. Um, but, no, but not mind that they're walking, but have horses and are armed. So we're learning more things about them. Is there anything else that I've missed here? Boys and the people. Um, oh, the young man, so mixed ages. Oh, and the stopping and looking around, that's really important. They're the things. Okay. Um, all we know is that at least one of them, we don't know their mixed ages, at least one of them is young. Um, this man's behaviour, stopping and looking around, oops, stopping, stopping and looking around suggests that he feels strongly motivated to succeed in the search or that he is feeling nervous. And look, I've given two possibilities. Now, it's one there's one important lesson for uh, comprehension here. Um, for life, but specifically for comprehension, which is that when you aren't sure what something means, you can often do something with that. So I don't know whether the fact he's stopping and looking around means that he's really keen to find the person or that he's scared of the person jumping out and attacking him. It might mean either or it might mean both. So I've acknowledged that and I've used that to make a really expanded point by saying it might mean this or it might mean this. And that shows that I'm open to the way that language can point in different directions and it bulks out my idea. So there's everything to be said for that. So don't be scared by ambiguity, by uncertainty about what things mean. Um, unless you're fairly sure that it's because there's a hole in your knowledge. Go with it and make a point out of it. OK, this is my answer. This is everything. So we went through and we said there was loads of stuff there, but actually I've got it into an answer that would only fill, it's hard to convert type to handwritten text, but would probably fill two thirds to three quarters of the answer space. But it's really thorough. It's got everything that I could find there. Let's check the English. These people are hunting for somebody, a male individual referred to as he. The people to your encounters are a small part of a bigger search party, they all, who are hunting further to the north. They are simply dressed, grey, but have horses and are armed. Now I'm stretching it a little bit there. We only know that one of them is simply dressed and we only know that one of them is armed. So I am guessing that the others are similarly presented. 
I know I can't actually conclude that. But if I'm going to follow the logic that I only know anything about this one person, I'm going to be short of things to say. So I have gone a little bit out on a limb there. At least one of them is young. This man's behaviour, stopping and looking around. Oopsie daisies, I've missed the comma. There we are. That's important. Stopping and looking around suggests that he feels strongly motivated to succeed in the search or that he is feeling nervous. There are certainly ways in which I can improve that stylistically, but it's fine. And it does the job. It's got everything I could find. And this is why I was underlining in the text so that as I flick to and fro, I could easily check my points. It's well structured or reasonably well structured because I group the points together. So I'm not mixing them up too much. I haven't got a bit of the bit about them being part, a small part of a bigger search party in one place and the bit about the others being in the north in another place. I've made sure that those things are together. Uh, I've grouped together the points about behaviour. Well, there's only one point about behaviour, isn't there? That's nonsense. But you see what I'm getting at. It isn't kind of chaotic with points about similar things in different places. And look at how I've used very short quotations. So if I'd written this without quotations, it probably wouldn't have been any shorter because I'd have had to say these things anyway. But I've used quotations as part of the things that I'm saying, which means that I'm both making my points and providing evidence. And that is, um, that is one of the most effective exam techniques that you can develop. Um, and it will serve you very well in, it will serve you very well in GCSE. It's very suited to GCSE style. It will also serve you well in your A-levels. Uh, if they're still doing A-levels by then, and replace them with something weird and wonderful. Uh, and it will serve you well beyond that. So very, very, very useful technique to master. Okay. I think we can call it a day there. It's gone 7.40, that's a good length of lesson, but it's not so long as to be painful and boring. So I think it's time for the music. It's time for me to have a sip of my coffee from the cunningly reversed panda mug. And it's time for me to wish you all well. Uh, next week we'll do something. Maybe it'll be more of this, maybe it won't. Maybe I'll do something different. I've got no idea. Uh, you don't either. Janina, many congratulations on being picked for your squash competition. That's absolutely fantastic. I hope you go forth and beat all of them, especially if they are other people in this chat. Um, Jaron Darrett, who passed and found my papers useful. Thank you so much. And my papers probably refer to my 11 plus lifeline resources. Link below. Find them online. Google is your friend. Um, yeah, brilliant. Kerry, we got into Tiffin Boys. Amazing that this channel is full of superstars. Um, and it's an honour to have such smart and capable people watching my lessons. All right, enough rubbish from me. Send me some work for free marking if you haven't already. Details in the video description. I'll see you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for something fabulous and entertaining. <laughs>